Item number SCP-668 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures Revised, as of No special containment procedures aside from standard security are required. SCP-668 is to be transferred to a locked safe deposit box at Site-19's high-value item storage facility. Standard defenses against intrusion, explosive, chemical, biological, and mimetic are to be in place at all times according to standard operating procedure. SCP-668 may only be removed from a safe deposit box by personnel with security clearance 2 or higher. Individuals wishing to make use of SCP-668 outside Site-19 must first submit a Form 668 Requested Course of Action form to O5-11 and be fitted with an explosive kill switch collar on a 24-hour timer before taking SCP-668 into the field. An auditing officer with security clearance 4 or higher must confirm that SCP-668 has been returned to its safe deposit box before the collar is deactivated. Description. SCP-668 is a 33cm or 13-inch chef's knife with a rosewood handle and full tank construction, crafted at some point from the late 1930s to the early 1940s. When first acquired by field operatives, SCP-668 was in badly rusted condition, with heavy pitting from bloodstains and other bodily fluids trapped in micro-crevices within the blade. Following thorough analysis, these irregularities were removed for aesthetic purposes. This has had negligible, if any, effect on SCP-668 special properties. The first recorded appearance of SCP-668 was in the 1960s, during the infamous case. A New York woman living alone was allegedly raped and murdered by subject Despite the fact that 38 witnesses reported hearing the attack, none of them attempted to aid the young woman for over six hours, until her eventual death. Whether the item received its property due to this event, or whether it had them beforehand, is a matter of debate. See Dr. Paper R.E. The Bystander's Effect vs. Dr. Theory regarding psychic imprintation. What is clear, however, is its current properties. When carried by a human or humanoid entity with violent intent towards another human or humanoid entity, SCP-668 broadcasts a psychic signal that renders all sentient beings with a psionic resistance index of 97 or lower incapable of assisting the victim. Affected entities report a sudden sense of apathy while under SCP-668 influence. Sensory input is not affected, and affected entities report feeling revulsion and horror, but are simply incapable of acting, even indirectly, to assist the victim. Meanwhile, it renders the victim incapable of defending themselves against their attacker. Tests using Class D personnel have shown no upper limit in the number of entities affected by the psychic resonance. At one test, twelve Class D personnel due for first-of-the-month termination were placed in a room alongside a researcher who was told to randomly select one test subject for death. The researcher killed all test subjects one by one, despite their professed horror. Prior incidents have indicated the possibility of hundreds, if not thousands of deaths due to SCP-668 unique properties. See Incident Report 668-A. R.E. Mall Massacre and Subsequent Information Blackout Operations Recovery of SCP-668 in such scenarios is problematic due to the item's psychic properties. Agents attempting to apprehend the subject during containment failure incidents are often themselves affected by SCP-668 so-called apathy field, resulting in casualties among Foundation personnel. Following Incident 668-A, standard retrieval protocol includes the use of a long-range sniper rifle, double-blind conditions, and three different agents working in tandem through carefully coordinated actions to prevent any of them realizing they are actively opposing the subject. Because of the obvious apocalyptic possibilities, it is the recommendation of this panel that SCP-668 be designated a Keter Level Threat and placed in high-level confinement. Addendum 668-A Following further testing, it has been determined that test subjects wielding SCP-668 can be terminated through passive response so long as the terminating agent is introduced before the subject takes possession of SCP-668. The Running Man Protocol see Appendix 668-B, Approved Terminating Agents, is hereby approved for use with SCP-668, and the item in question is hereby reclassified as a Euclid-type object. Addendum 668-B Use of Omega-7 personnel for retrieval SCP-668 during future containment failure incidents is to be hereby forbidden due to the danger of SCP-076-2 coming into contact with the item. 
Addendum 668-B is revoked as of due to SCP-076-2 the express distaste at using an item that, in its own words, takes all the fun out. Possibility of using SCP-076-2 as a sole agent for any future containment failure incidents under review. With the ending of the Omega-7 project, no further attempts to weaponize SCP-076-2 or SCP-668 are to be attempted. Addendum 668-C Do not under any circumstances allow SCP-668 to come into contact with SCP-682. Note that although average human beings have a sonic resistance index of 24, SCP-682 has been tested with a sonic resistance index of placing it above SCP-668's threshold of effect. The possibilities of a creature inimical to all life gaining possession of something like this should be obvious. With the ending of the Omega-7 project, no further attempts to weaponize SCP-682 or SCP-668 are to be attempted. Addendum 668-D Request to reclassify SCP-668 under its original designation as a Keter-class object under review. Addendum 668-E Request to reclassify SCP-668 under its original designation as a Keter-class object denied. SCP-668 will remain at Euclid classification. Incident. Retrieval of SCP-668, 13-inch chef's knife. SCP involved SCP-668. Personnel involved. Date. Location Description On City Police Department, Precinct Responded to reports of a man attacking and killing bystanders with a large chef's knife at a local mall. Upon responding, officers discovered 15 casualties, most of whom had been ritually flinched in a manner described by witnesses as horrific. Officers discovered a suspect, an escaped serial killer named henceforth referred to as suspect, in the child's daycare area in the process of filleting and consuming a nine-year-old boy. Officers ordered suspect to cease and desist. Suspect did not comply. Officers then attempted to fire upon suspect, but discovered they were unable to pull the trigger. Officers then attempted to flee, but found themselves unable to do so as the suspect declared his intention to murder every last one of you motherfucking pigs. Suspect then proceeded to Ending with Cynthia Wallace, a Foundation operative embedded as an observer with the PD. Despite being under severe psychic assault, Officer Wallace, a pseudonym, managed to activate her emergency transponder located in her belt while complying with suspect's orders to alerting the Foundation of the situation. Mobile Task Force Pi-1 City Slickers arrived on the scene minutes later, disguised as the FBI Special Anti-Terrorist Task Force. Pi-1 breached the perimeter at corresponding with the moment that Officer Wallace's vital signs telemetry ceased transmitting. Task Force members discovered suspects standing outside the department store on the third floor of the mall. The police officers' bodies were found suspended from the third floor railing, skin flinched and arranged in the form of wings, entrails removed and trailing to the floor. Officer Wallace's body was found. SCP operatives then attempted to terminate suspect, only discovered that they too were unable to fire their weapons. Team leader transmitted a Class 1 Type 73 memetic attack alert to command and ordered the team to withdraw. This order failed when suspect stated his intention to find out what all your insides look like, rendering them helpless to escape. Involved Task Force members were subsequently remote terminated using surgically installed cranial detonators according to standard field protocol following psychic compromise in a field agent. Command elements then authorized escalation of force to Tier 2, severe collateral damage, aerial bombardment was attempted but failed when the pilots were unable to release their payload over the target. It was thus determined that the psychic field that prevents hostile intent towards subject may have an infinite range. Escalation of force to Tier 3 was considered, but delayed while Dr. Gear suggested an alternate strategy with a higher chance to retrieve the item intact. Hypothesizing that hostile intent was required for the psychic controls to trigger, Dr. Gear suggested using Class D personnel under mind control by SCP-061. Previously prepped sleepwalker agents fitted with surgically implanted earpieces transmitting SCP-061 were given the following commands. D-061-056 was ordered to give the following commands to the rest of the personnel through radio control. 
D-061056 was not given any indication as to the reason for said commands to prevent the psychic defenses from triggering. Agents were able to order D-061056 to give the following orders, suggesting that the psychic defense may only be able to function through a certain number of iterations. More research is required on this issue. D-061058 through 070, 12 personnel, were ordered to carry explosive charges to 12 predetermined points, opening gas mains along the way. Explosives were detonated in sequence upon giving the final order by D-061056. D-061099, who fit the profile of the subject's preferred type of victim, was ordered to move to a predetermined location at the center of the mall to lure the suspect to the best location for both ensuring a kill and allowing for easy retrieval of the remains. Finally, six D-Class personnel not under control by SCP-061 were ordered to capture the subject. These Class D personnel were not expected to complete their mission, and served as a delay in action while the mind-controlled operatives carried out their mission. The operation was a success. By utilizing multiple personnel, none of whom were aware of the significance of their actions, none of the personnel knew that their actions were related to terminating the suspect and were thus able to act freely. Suspects' remains were retrieved from the rubble by a bomb-diffusing robot and placed in a box lined with SCP-148 before being retrieved by Foundation personnel. Following confirmation of capture, Command ordered Tier 3 nuclear detonation elements to stand down from Ready-5 status and declared the incident contained. A cover story blaming the attack on terrorists was formulated and disseminated to the public. Controlled testing has determined the suspect's weapon, 13-inch chef's knife, was the active agent in the incident, emanating a psionic command that suspects' remains are to be sent to PD along with a replica knife. The original weapon is to be designated a Keter level SCP, SCP-668, and sent to Site-19 for further testing. How the suspect acquired SCP-668 is unknown at this time. It is further known that the obsessive nature of the suspect's method of killing may have contributed to the success of his operation. Subject carried out his killings in a ritualistic manner, maximizing the amount of horror, pain, and suffering inflicted on his victims. For this reason, Foundation personnel were able to keep him contained within an enclosed area, the mall, and formulate a plan of action. Should the subject have made the decision to leave the mall and continue its killing spree elsewhere, immediate Tier 3 response by a double-blind operator would have been the only possible method of containing the incident. 